towns and cities in that path of totality, that's where the moon is going to completely cover the sun, are expected to see their population swell for this big event. The Transportation Department says about 200 million people live within a day's drive to that path. Hotels are booked, and DOT has warned drivers are going to be on the road a lot. So, by all the hype, that's what Newsy's Lauren Stevenson wanted to know. So she chatted with Phil Plate, a.k.a. The Bat Astronomer, who is one of the millions of Americans planning to take in the total eclipse. I would say that this eclipse is special um, for three reasons. And that it's rare, it's beautiful, and it's just cool. And, and I know that sounds sort of meta, but, but the deal is an eclipse doesn't happen terribly often in any one spot. They happen every year, something like that, um, but it's usually over the Pacific Ocean, Antarctica, you know, Greenland, someplace where it's hard to see. And this one is special because it's happening over a massively populated country. Uh, that doesn't happen terribly often. I guess the last one that passed over big cities was in 1999, and that was in Europe. Um, also, it's just cool, the fact that we have the moon orbiting the Earth, the Earth orbiting the sun, and every now and again things line up just so, so that the moon passes directly in front of the sun blocks the face of it, and then you can see the outer atmosphere, the corona of the sun glowing. It's something you never get to see uh, as a human being standing on Earth. We have telescopes in space, special telescopes that can see it, um, but that's not something you can stand, you know, basically in your backyard or, or a campsite or someplace, look up and see. And the other thing is that it's beautiful. Uh, the corona has these streamers uh, or, or structures in it that uh, that are just absolutely stunning to see, at least in photographs. And uh, the moon is not a perfect sphere. It's got craters and mountains and such in it. And so a little bit of uh, the sun's surface can poke through. And you might also see towers, these what, what are called prominences of gigantic filaments of, of hydrogen gas blowing off the sun's surface guided by its magnetic field. And, and these glow kind of reddish. And all of these things together paint a picture uh, of something that is spectacular and rare and stunning. At least that's what I've been told. This will be my first. So, uh, I'll, you know, ask me again on, uh, on August 22nd. I'll let you know how moving it really was. Why do you think now of, of all <laughs> the, the ones we've had that so there's so much hype? Well, that's easy. There's so much hype because it's happening in America, and America is the land of hype. Uh, it, the one in 1999 over Europe uh, actually was uh, promoted a lot uh, locally there. We didn't hear that much about it in America uh, outside of the usual sources. But in this case, because it's happening in America, uh, you know, the, the local news is carrying it, and uh, the national news is carrying it. Everybody's talking about it, and even though um, you know we're a fraction of the world's population, I, I think we're the, we're the chattiest. And so uh, on social media and that sort of thing, you're seeing a lot of talk about this. The path is cutting right across a lot of big cities. So honestly, uh, millions of people are going to see this. And it could very well be the most viewed eclipse in human history, uh, simply because, of course, we have more people now, but also because it is passing right across a uh, densely populated country. Uh, this is a spectacular, rare, and beautiful thing to see. Uh, I hope everybody gets a chance to see it. And if you do, make sure you see it safely. Make sure you have the eclipse glasses that are uh, rated by ISO to be safe. There are a lot of fake eclipse glasses being sold, but you can pick these up at libraries. Astronomers Without Borders sells them. A bunch of people have them. There's still time to get them. What are your plans for you know this first experience for you? I've seen a lot of partial solar eclipses. I've seen a lot of lunar eclipses. Those happen uh, more often, actually. Uh, but this is my first total solar eclipse. And my wife and I run a science vacation company we call Science Getaways. And we take people, small groups of people, to interesting places where there's cool science and, and we explore there. And this one seemed like, you know, pretty obvious. So we're actually in a ranch in western Wyoming. There will be 30, 35 of us, something like that. Uh, and we'll all be standing basically uh, right near the center line of this eclipse. We're going to get just over two minutes, which is about the most you can get for this particular eclipse. Uh, I can't wait. Uh, I'm, I'm considering taking a few pictures, not many, because I really want to stand there 
and enjoy not just the eclipse itself, but the reactions of the people around me who are not, you know, they're not necessarily astronomers, and also look to see what else is going on. Um, it, it, when you go and look at this eclipse, little pinholes in leaves or leaves overlapping in trees will cast images of the sun on the ground or on buildings if, if you happen to be standing near one. And you'll get hundreds or thousands of images of this eclipse happening at the same time. And little things like that that I think are really going to make this amazing.